Hey guys, it's Tubby here with the Nerdy Bird site, and I am sitting with the infamous Marcel P. Black, you guys. Happy. <laughs> we are here today to talk about a host of things that he has going on. First of all, would you tell everybody a little bit about Cry Freedom? It's his latest project that's been buzzing. He's had some touring going on. The numbers on it are really, really nice. And if you hadn't had an opportunity to check it out, you really should stop what you're doing and make that happen. But we'll hear from the horse's mouth. Give us a little bit of feedback about this project. What inspired you to create it? And why is it being pushed so hard for you right now? Oh, um, Cry Freedom uh, is a project that went through many changes. Uh, literally started uh, working on it in the summer of 2008. Um, I knew when I first got some of the first production, you know, produced by Joe for Real Profit, whatever, um, I knew it was something special. And uh, I felt like if I would put it out back then when I was in like my early 20s, then it probably really would, I didn't say it wouldn't have mattered, but I wasn't the complete artist I needed to be. And so, like, it, like literally from the, first, from the first time I started that project, I literally released like eight other projects in between. Uh, I just, you know, get dope production, um, you know, I travel a lot, so just kind of get my name up and like, you know, being able to get uh, bigger name features that the average bad artist wouldn't be able to get. Um, but just kind of, you know, just, just really like taking like my sweet, sweet time trying to put together a classic project. Um, Cry Freedom is definitely, uh, you know, is, is country rap tunes, it's is definitely a conscious hip hop album. Like when we started, when we was creating the album, by the time we got finished, like our goal was to like make a project, you know, it's kind of a mixture of like Crit was here. Even though a lot of the like that style of production we was already doing before Crit, but right, that's right. you know that Crit was here, uh, uh Dead Presses, Let's Get Free, Good Mob Soul Food. So just trying to make like a classic down south, dirty, you know, down right. south, dirty south hip hop, conscious hip hop album. And uh it's done well for me, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's taken me to a lot of different places. It's really cool. uh, just just been blessed with it. You know, we originally released it. And I released it with my label in uh, Real Profit Entertainment and we had distribution with Grand Union, you know, we're not going to work with them anymore. But uh, it's done well. I've, I've seen a lot of places. It's still selling well. It's still, you know, I'm still getting show dates off for the revenue. So it's just been a blessing. Nice, nice. So what is your ultimate goal with Cry Freedom? Uh, the title in itself brings up so much controversy in the reality of what's going on today, you know what I'm saying? So when you really get to the heart of the conceptual aspect, the lyrically inclined aspect of your work, what do you want your audience to take from Cry hmm. Freedom? I want this stuff with controversy, I mean, it's real life. Like, it's only controversy because it makes people uncomfortable. Right. But, but, but none, none of us are really comfortable. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm six foot three, 400 pounds, dark skin, I got all black on. I can go outside and get shot for no reason. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a couple of truth that I have to live with every single time I get into my car and the police officer pulls up behind me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And for you, even 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 as a young lady, like, you know, we saw what happened to Sandra Bland, we saw what happened to Rakia Boy, you know, with, with, with fathers, we saw what happened to Tamir Rice, we saw what happened to we saw what happened to Ayanna Jones. So, I mean, being African in America, I mean, that's just kind of something that we deal with. And I mean, <clears throat> I'll be 34 in a couple weeks. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, college educated, uh, I work, you know what I'm saying, uh, full time job. And for the people who I, 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 I talk to, just my, my friend base, they live more like me than Rick Ross. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I like, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and to even say that, like, I mean, millionaires can get it too. Like, we saw how they treated Obama and when he was in office. So, I mean, so, so basically, so it's basically talking to, um, you know, just the everyday black experience, you know. Um, just, I've, I've, I've always kind of taken that artistic approach as it pertains to like uh, thoughtful, you know what I'm saying, conscious music or whatever with more with a kind of a street edge or whatever because, I mean, that's my influence. like, you know, being a youth development worker and working in the school system and just kind of working in the community. Like, you know, um, just being influenced by, you know what I'm saying? So part of it's my personal influences and kind of speaking to the surroundings that I'm in, you know, in terms of the peer group. But then like when I go into like these these these, these poor neighborhoods and I go into these school systems and I go into these homes, you know what I'm saying? I just always want to make art that kind of reflects that existence because not everybody has a, a opportunity to speak for themselves, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of my music is uh, reflective of the conversations that I personally have with myself things that I pray about, things that I talk to the, the young people that I mentor, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's real life, you know, stuff that I feel like is, is very, very, you know, relatable more than anything that you're going to hear on top 40 and top 20 radio, whatever. Right, right. 
So with understanding that your influence, it impacts hard, you know what I'm saying? Not just in a lyrical aspect, you are one of those foot soldiers that's not only displaying your expression through your work, but you actually get out here and you let people know that what you say is what you live. A lot of people don't practice what they preach. And with that understanding, you know, a lot of us are excited to see what the new EP7 is really gonna be all about. We understand the way your mind works based off of what you do us. And with that, it's always an inspiration to hear you take a situation that could be really, really optic for bad and really shine light on it in the sense of you can do better, we can be better, we can move right. beyond the circumstances of our everyday tribulations. So do you think that seven is kind of in the same inspirational aspect yes. as it's, Try Freedom? Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's a great question, great question, great, great observation, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you doing your own work out here. This is what I'm you know what I'm saying? Awesome. Um, Seven is different because Cry Freedom is, I mean, a lot of the music deals with pain. Okay. Like honesty and pain. Like, you know, from, from my, from the way I choose to deliver my rhymes to the way I write, you know, I don't really, I'm not gonna learn to rap rapper straight to the point. Because, you know, I, I, I grew up son of a uh, gospel musician, he grew up in the church. And so like, all my music is pretty much written like a sermon. I'm, I'm less, I'm more of a pastor, I would say preacher, than a poet, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so, so that's kind of the approach that I take. Um, seven is different in, in terms of, well, let's go production wise. Like, you know, me and Joe had, we had a particular mindset in terms of what, how we wanted to produce, you know, uh, as far as, uh, you know, signing, signing. Right. Seven, you know what I'm saying? I, I went back because I worked with my cousin, Jay Philly, and uh, I wanted to make some, something that didn't sound like anything that's ever been put out locally, nationally, nothing that's out right now, whatever. And content wise, it's, it's somewhat of a departure in the sense that it's the most profane. Uh, project of a, I did, and I say profane, not in a crass way, but like, you know, use use using more profane language because I'm angry, right. and I feel like, you know, cry freedom was like saying like, I didn't say it was begging for freedom, but it was just saying like, look, this is what we going through, we just want to be free, like, leave us okay. leave us alone, and like, like seven is more of a saying like, man, F that, man, we, we, I mean, you know, like F that, like, we we just it's not it's not. Nah, right. like, like literally, like vehemently opposing, rejecting white supremacy, and just, and just all the different isms and is whatever that kind of holds us back. You know what I'm saying? As, 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 as you know, as courses as Africans uh, in America, but just as people in general. So I would say that it's probably the most intersectional project. Like you know, I am a conscious rap. I'm not afraid to say that I'm in support of the LBG, LBGTQ community. You know what I'm saying? Um, one thing I didn't really get to uh, pontificate on. On Cry Freedom was, I guess, uh, my my views on black womanism. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first started Cry Freedom, I had a wife and kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm married and I'm a father now. And so just being married and being a father to a little girl, being you know, married okay. to a black woman, and then just also kind of thinking of how I want my son to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? And maybe kind of go back and um, Prevent my views in terms of the way I the way I appreciate women, the way I treat women, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. And just kind of speaking to a lot of different issues that that you just wouldn't necessarily hear a, a rapper speak about or whatever. So um, that's where it's different. Um, but it's always everything I've ever done is always you know what I'm saying been rooted in like you know soulfulness. Um, I always had a street edge to it. I always been conscious or whatever. I always been thoughtful or whatever. But I think that like this one, I'm taking more chances than any. Right. Like I'm, I'm 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 like okay. Like most people will say, okay, Cry Freedom is dope. Let's do a Cry Freedom 2. Right. I told Joe we don't want to do a Cry Freedom 2. He sent me some Cry Freedom 2 beats. I've had other producers send me beats called Cry Freedom 2. I'm like, nah, like, you know, with a simple, with a, with a, uh, 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 a similar sample that says freedom in it or whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, nah, man, because, like, I'm a weird artist. Like, I feel like if I chose to, I could make any type of music because I understand the hustle and I feel like I can do well with it. But I want to challenge every single time. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, I've been blessed to um, just create what's on my heart and move with it. So I'm gonna take a chance every time. Oh every, every single time I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to. I listen to a lot of hip hop. Like I listen to a lot of rap. Like I go to strip clubs. I hear that type of music. I go to the hip hop shows and I hear that type of music. I listen to the podcast. I'm, I'm like 100% hip hop nerd. So I have, a, I have a pretty good range of influences and kind of a, a, a very good knowledge base as it pertains to what's going on in the culture 
from the underground to the mainstream, what have you. And I wanted to sign nothing like that. Like I, you know, what I'm saying I, I don't want, I don't want to. Like of course I'm taking from it. I'm paying attention. You know, just being a student of the craft and the art or whatever. But I want to because I feel like that's how you push culture forward. I'm like even as an older person, I don't feel like um, an artist has to be you know sound a particular way to be considered real hip hop. I think I think I think what we have to do is always take chances. I mean I think I think it's all about intent and. The, I guess you say the mindset in which you approach the art or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, with that said, I always want to do something different because, I mean, you know, my my, my, my daughter about to be seven in a couple of weeks. Nice. My son is five. I want them to enjoy hip hop. You, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't got to be the same thing. I want it to be something different. I want it to be something new. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So for me, I feel like my contribution, you know what I'm saying, is always trying to push the culture forward and push my artistic influences forward or whatever. So. Um, like I said, thematically, you know, it always has the same underlying thing, but for the most part, I think Seven is completely different, especially different from anything I've ever done before. That's awesome. And do you have a, a release date set? Do you have an idea when you September 24, 2017. So, so, <laughs> if people, so, I say that because, like, it took me a lot of work to pick that date, and it's, so, it's such an uncon uh, unconventional date or whatever. Right. Um, so, you know, I study, and I'm, I'm a student of Black Liberation Theology from Black Christian Nationalism. I'm um, studying uh, com comedic, uh, 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 I'm kind of trying to say, comedic uh, religion, uh, spirituality. Um, definitely grew up in the church, studied, studied Islam, and I studied a lot of 5% uh, of lessons or whatever. So if you listen to my music, you hear all those type of elements or whatever. But I mean, so, so the word 70 was God, you know what I'm saying? And so, so you, you, you're going to hear like a lot of. Uh, Five percent of references in my music, or whatever. So, if you do, if you understand, you know, if you understand divine mathematics, and you understand the term of math, if you add every single number, two thousand seventeen, you get the equal seven. So, but that's just that's just that's just. I can break it down. We ain't got time for all that, bro. I, I I ain't, I ain't got my dry erase board, so I can break it down. How it counts or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. So it equals seven. So I chose that day. One of my one of my mentors, Truth Universal, is guy body, and we went back and forth probably about two days trying to figure out like what date I could release it on that equal seven. And so it's gonna come out on a Sunday and I'll be actually hosting the Fade and Flow that day. And it's not gonna be my release party, but I'll, it has to come out on that day. Okay. The math has to line up or whatever. We have to make the release party. Nah, 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 that's, that's something different, that's something different. We'll, 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 me and Joe will talk about other stuff. So when are y'all gonna do that? Because we can't have the official drop I'm, with seven being the number of perfection without like the perfect release party. I mean, it's, it's gonna happen, it's not gonna be on that day though. It's not gonna okay. be on that day. I, I can accept that as long I'm, as it's I'm, I'm very, I'm worried about that. No, that's fine. I know that you don't want to take the spotlight from the community. That's 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 very yeah, that's very yeah, I understand that as an artist. You I mean, I, I might I might have a couple pieces of merch that people somebody want to shop because I actually just be flying back to Tulsa that day. Nice. So I might go have my bag with me. So I just take the bag out of the van, put it in, okay. put it in the barbershop. But um, overall, you know, like I'm, I'm very proud of it. Like I'm, I'm nervous about it. That's I'm nervous. That's when you think about being such a great bass hip hop enthusiast in the sense that you are. Is there really a line or realistically the ideal of success or failure for you when it comes not to just this project but everything overall, knowing that you take the chances and you take in innovation? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm gonna tell you a secret. <laughs> I get butterflies every single time because because I'm gonna tell you because I make my music in a particular vacuum. I'm my only child, so once I get my own song, I don't care what nobody else thinks, right. right? You know what I'm saying? I've always been a late bloomer. I've always kind of been a different guy, and I've always kind of subconscious about it. It got to the point where I just pressed the effort button. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, it, like once we hit, once the first thing we come out, we come out like real, real soon. Like, it is like 100% pain and struggle in the record. When I say it's stripped down, it's basic, and what might lack in, uh, excuse me, vocal pitch correction. Or what might rap might lack in? Uh, how can I say? You know, like just just the the beauty of what you would call the mix and match the manicure record is you know is 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 balanced out by just you will feel the pain and struggle. And so I'm listening to it. I enjoy. it. I understand as a hip hop fan what it means. And so I think what I do get nervous about is. Well, other people understand what I mean. Now, this is my tenth project, so apparently somebody can understand it. <laughs> but you know, I'm, you're always gonna be self-conscious because I don't really care about. I, I, like when I make music, I care about the message. 
I care about staying true to the culture. I care about, um, like I said, being a son of a gospel musician and being a son of a gospel singer. Like watching my father make, make music that brought people to tears and brought people to Christ and just really touched their souls. Right. So I care about that. I care about, and like that's my modus operandi in terms of why I make music because I want to touch your soul. I want to speak to you. I want to. I guess you could say this is my ministry. I want to deliver a message right. upon you. But you know. Sometimes I do I do take against myself and wonder will it do that or whatever. So that's a, so now I take my artist hat off and I put my businessman hat on and it's up to me to figure out the best way to give it to the people and make people understand to where I am just easily like digestible, but it is you know what I'm saying that it's, it, it is digestible over. So I'm definitely nervous. You know, I'll, anytime you take a chance, but I'd rather take a calculated risk to say say. Right. I'd rather take a calculated risk to where uh, you know where. You know, where I, I'm, 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 a, you guys know, I'm a worst case scenario person, anyways. <laughs> Whatever, because I, I know, I know we can be silly sometimes. Right. So I'm like, look, if I could, if I could convert the silly people, everybody else gonna be everybody straight. Gonna be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but yeah, um, you know, I mean, I'm blessed. Like pretty much as soon as, as soon as the project drops. You know what I'm saying? I'll be on the road or whatever. So I got to live by that. By the cry freedom, I, I I had no doubt in my mind because we worked on it for so long. We put so much time into it. Right. Like I literally recorded this in like like in a span of like two days. We only I probably was only in the booth maybe seven hours total. Nice. So it was just I went to Jackson, Mississippi with my man Fifth Child. We just got in there and we just knocked it out. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't no I don't have eight years to set it up. Right. To determine what that matters. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's just like look. And I really just wanted to kind of reflect what it's like to be a black man in America, you know, in, 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 in Trump's America. Right. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, you know, I, I think it will be relatable in that capacity, whatever, but you never know, but I'm, I'm going to live by that. Why ain't going to die by it? <laughs> I'm going to live by live by it. We're going to die by it. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to die by it. We'll stay alive. Well, I think the cool thing about it is, you know, in terms of speaking things into existence, uh, the nerves for not knowing whether or not this project will be what you want it to be. I think titling it seven is such a beautiful thing in the reality of perfection because it's a self-expression of your truth and your life. So in that sense, I think it's perfect already, you know what I mean? But so far as your younger audience, you know, we talk about overall what you want taken from the project, just the relatability factor, because it's honest and it's pure and it's raw. But when you talk to younger people that are just listening to music more so for the vibe of it rather than the story behind it, what do you hope that they take from your music? Because it's a little bit different. I mean, it's very different. I remember, like, like I've been, like, serious hip-hop since I was, like, 11 years old. Right. And so, like, when I was coming up, even when I was a teenager, like, while I was listening to... You know what I'm saying? Three Six Mafia or uh, No Limit. I was also to the Black Star and the Roots. Nice. So, and, and that's because the music industry, and in terms of what it put out in mainstream media, was more balanced, right? There's no balance now. Right. So everything, everything is one particular way. You have to really dig deep off for the, the, for the underground stuff. So, I mean, you gotta understand, like some of the greatest hip hop albums ever, 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 ever were made by teenagers. Right. Time, I mean, and, and, and I think it has a lot to do with the intent. So, in terms of the younger audience. Um, Honestly, I don't know. I, I, like, it's weird because, like, so I don't, I don't rap in bad moods often at all. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, a lot of, a lot of the young artists just know me as the fat dude sitting who hosts the barbershop shows. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, they haven't necessarily been. Now, some of them who say I've been listening to your music for a long time or whatever, but you gotta understand, like, when I first started, like, rapping out here, like, this kid's a kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I can't necessarily. I can tell you when I travel, when I travel across the country, like. It is a lot of young people into hip hop. Bad News is just a, a very, you know, it's, it's yeah. very, it, it, has, it has a different and very peculiar, it's not a peculiar scene, but a very specific scene of whatever's going on right now, whatever. So as far as the younger audience, man, I just hope, and I know, I mean, not to say that all the young dudes ain't into hip hop is that third. I mean, I do think times are different or whatever, which is, which is fine. They shouldn't be stuck in the time capsule. But um, I just, I, if, if, if I'm talking to a 22 year old person, just understand that, like, you're gonna be older a lot longer than you're gonna be younger. Right. And so though every single day, and though like a lot of things that I've experienced, you have not experienced yet, I've been 23 before, so I know what it's like. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I, 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 I know what it's like. I know what it's like to just to be young, and you party, and you drink, and you chase after girls, and you just, and you just lit, right? right? 
Like every, like every, every, ever, every other Throwback Thursday, I post a picture of my young days. People like, man, you, man, your, uh, a legend man was like, man, you still dress. I was like, I was, I, man, look. Y'all know, y'all know, conscious rapper father, Marcel P. Like, like, y'all don't know young seller, but I was, I was, I was, I was really out. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, so, I mean, but, but, so the things, it, it just, it's just thing that we have to understand as a whole. Just because you don't know about it, just because you have not experienced it, you have not read about it, does not mean it doesn't happen and it can't happen to you. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Mike Brown was 18 years old, you know what I'm saying? Freddie Gray was like 20, 21 years old, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? These, these, these are young people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, in like white supremacy and, and homophobia and, you know, just all, all these different things that affect young black people, period, happen to everybody, not just people who know about it. Right. right? And from an artistic level, one thing I've always tried to show and one thing I've always tried to teach was, cause I'm, I'm that guy, when I was in my 20s, I've been doing the same thing for my whole career. But people told me that it would never happen because no one would hear that conscious rap. You need to go overseas, you need to move to a different city, stand the third. I didn't listen, I didn't listen, I did what I had to do, and I've been very successful, successful. I've outlasted a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? On both ends, from artists to DJs to whatever, gatekeepers, promoters, I've outlasted a lot of people doing what I want to do. Um, and so I've always tried to teach, uh, you know, some, some of the younger artists that if you take care of your business, and once you take your artist hat, make whatever art you want to make, but once you finish with your art, put your business hat on, and if you boss up, take care of your business, you can make whatever art you want to. Right. You know what I'm saying? saying like the, the ability to create opportunity is everything. You know what I'm saying? The smarts and the know-how, and that's how you maintain a career or whatever. Because the biggest thing about it is a lot of young artists don't understand how to make money from their art. Right. So when you don't understand how to make money from your art, you feel, okay, I want to do what I want to do. I'm not really seeing no money. I'm not really seeing no progress. So therefore, let me try to make what's popular. And they still don't make no, they still don't make no move. Cause now you oversaturate yourself. Now you put yourself, you know what I'm saying? Just another piece of salt in the salt shaker. Be that piece of pepper in the salt shaker. People gonna see that, people gonna notice that. And when you come out, it's gonna taste different, have a different flavor to it or whatever. I like that. So for me, I just came up with that too. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, so for me, the rest is the same reason why I, I approach Fade the Flow, whatever I do. When I'm dealing with younger artists, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to let them know you can make whatever type of music you want to. And I feel like I feel like there's no better example in the city of Bad Rules of the person who said, F it, and did what you want to do, and it's seeing some success from that man. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's, it's allowed me to make, uh, uh, you know, be around for a long time, whatever. So. Yeah, so you listen more so people that understand that if you really want to make you some conscious rap, you can make you some conscious rap. You know what I'm saying? If you just if you just if you just take care of your business and you know and go about it in a very uh you know, you gotta work hard you gotta work hard and make some great art and work even harder up to fence other people how great your art is. That's what's up, that's what's up. So September twenty fourth, we're locking in the date for the seven EP. We're looking forward to hearing all the wonderful things through the anger and the pain of Marcel P. Black. But tell everybody where they can locate you on social media and also where they can be looking for that album to drop on the twenty fourth. On the twenty fourth, so very, 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 very good question. First things first, Marcel P. Black dot bandcamp dot com. Most of the is on there. See, like I got the, the nice band camp jump. You can see music videos, buy merch, and buy physical CDs, and T-shirts, and all of this stuff. So it's very, very important to support more so people at that bandcamp.com or whatever. Uh, Lord willing, the creek don't rise. The uh, pre-order should be up very, very soon, or what have you. Uh, definitely more so people at that com. Um, of course, it'll be on all different retailers, all streaming sites, so from your, from your, uh, you know, your iTunes to your Google Plays, your Amazon's, and definitely your titles and your Spotify's, your Apple Music's, and anywhere that you know you can get, uh, anywhere you can get digital music, um, social media, more so people black on everything, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, and I'm out. Yeah, he is, cause I'm right here with him. Really, really out. <laughs> Hey, one more thing, and we're going to let the people go and anticipate this album the way that I am. Make sure that you're waiting for the review because it will be up on the 24th. Um, but uh, a word of inspiration, not your man right now. What's something that you want to leave so far as the Marcel P. Black legacy? What is it that you're working so hard for? Hmm. If you can just leave them with a, a side note, whether that be inspirational, whether that be, you know, just well, saying. Well, yes, great question. <laughs> No, because, no, seriously, like, this is probably going to tend for me. So, like, legacy is everything. Like, I feel like I made my classic album. Right. I feel like Crown Freedom is my record to die. That's my ill man. I feel like, but I feel like now, I want to, I want to 
leave a mark on Baton Rouge for all of hip hop. So I want to be, I want when people, when 20 years from now, when people look back on Baton Rouge hip hop, you know what I'm saying? I want them to say, Marcel P. Black did his thing. He spoke to what was going on in the city. He spoke to what was going on, and he, he did a lot for the actual hip hop scene or whatever, you know? He, 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 he really did it, you know what I'm saying? And for all hip hop, like because, because I'm gonna tell you as, as, as a touring artist, I go to all the different cities and different states, and all they know is Boosie Webby, and, and, and they talk about Young Boy now. And the city has such a beautiful story to tell, an ugly story to tell as well, and, but there's so many other sides to Baton Rouge. And I'm not saying that their stories aren't valid. Right. I'm just saying that it, just, it, it isn't indicative of everybody who happens to, you know what I'm saying, the capital city. So for me, even as a transplant, I've been here for 15 years or whatever, I want to, I, I want people to say, man, he did record with these guys. Right. Man, he did that. Man, he did that or what happened. And you know, so so it's, it's, it's bigger than, it's bigger than bad rules, but it's still centered around bad rules, is what I want my contributions within the city to, to, to you know what I'm saying, to actually go into like hip hop as a total 44 year culture. And you know what I'm saying, and off on what So um, just make make timeless music. I remember after Ninth, I mean after uh, Prince died, Ninth Wonder was like, look, we ain't got no excuse not to, to not to make the best music we possibly can. And so that's that's my approach to it. Like let's just make let's make great art. You know what I'm saying? Continue on the legacy, and uh, yeah, just keep pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, you've heard it here. You officially got your first insight on the one and only Marcel P. Black's new EP that'll be dropping September 24th, entitled Seven. Make sure that you guys take the opportunity to not only tune in and listen to the album, but really get behind the story and vibe with him as he displays his heart and his emotions behind his city, his expressions, and his person. It's been a pleasure, you guys. Tell me up the Nerdy Bird, checking out.